To tell us more about the state of US commercial real estate, I'm joined now by Yan Liang. She's a professor of economics at Willamette University. Thanks for coming back on the show. Always great to have you. Now, the pandemic gave a lot of workers time to think and reconsider what they wanted out of their work lives, leading to what became known as the Great Re Resignation. What have been some of the big takeaways for employees and employers of this pandemic shift in the way we work? Good to talk to you, Sally. Um, so I think this pandemic really taught people uh, from the employer side um, that you know they need to rebalance um, you know what they expect from their workers and what they can offer to their workers. You know what can be do can be done to you know improve productivity, workers morale, and um, also to help them to strike that work life balance. And from the employee side, I think as you mentioned, the great resignation, um, which basically you know many workers are reconsidering what is their life priorities, right? And how are they going to balance that life and work? And also what might be, um, you know, the sort of the future workplace should look like. And so I think it's really a reset um, to some of these workplace dynamics. Many people now work a four day week. Do you think that that might become the new norm? And will the ability to work from home become a new status that a lot of employees seek? But even for those who are struggling to, to still work at home, what are some of the things that employers are using to to, to draw them back to the office? Yeah, that's a great question. I think from the employee side, um, many people now do prefer to have that remote remote options. Um, when you look at the LinkedIn, uh, according to their research, half of the job applicants right, right now are looking for some kind of remote arrangements. Um, but the job posting is a different picture. So we see the share of remote job uh, posting is going down um, um, from, you know, before 26 percent, you know, back in, you know, 2022, now only 12 percent as of January 2023. So in other words, employers uh, want their employees to come back um, they hope that this can improve communications, they can improve, you know, uh, productivity and also that kind of collaboration. But I think employees, on the other hand, would want to have some kind of flexible work arrangements. And so I think there's no one size fits all approach. Um, the employers really need to think about, you know, what is their, you know, priority? Do they want to offer the remote options, right, as a perk, as a job? Um, or, you know, um, they would still want their, want their employees to come back so then they help to build, rebuild that network. And what about for those who want to advance their careers? Is there a danger that being out of the office will equal to being out of mind, you know, when it comes to the career advancement that they might be seeking? Right. And again, I think there's no one size fits all answer to this. Um, for companies that really evaluate workers' presence at work and that sort of network effects, then yes. I think for these uh, employees, it's better for them to go back to Avianza Korea in their office space, but there are other companies that really value, you know, the, the deliverables um, of the employees. They care maybe less about, you know, if the, the employee is in the office space or not. So I think for employees, um, as you mentioned about the four-day week, uh, four week um, which I think is very interesting. Sometimes more work, more working time doesn't necessarily mean better outcomes. And um, there has been, you know, really interesting large scale trial in UK, in Ireland um, and in um, uh, various places like Spain. And most of them show positive outcomes that workers seem to improve their productivity and morale. And so it's actually bad for the companies and for the employees. All right, Yan Liang, thanks so much for your time.